the latest coverage of the results in the local elections. Um, Hugh Edwards with those local election results in just a moment. Uh, we, carry we could carry on if you wanted to. Um, well, see, but you don't have any local election results, no, but we can see you through to daybreak, Ben. We no, 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 but it's funny because, I mean, I suspect people like Sajid Javid and other Conservatives who consider themselves to be more inclusive are going to be really, really concerned that the handling of the Windrush affair and the fact that people have known that these problems have been out there for a number of years. People like David Lammy have been raising this about constituents for six or seven years. Is, this is going to hammer them at the polls in certain constituencies. And, and, and actually, where that's a shame, I don't think this is a Tory or Labour issue, to be fair. OK, I guys. Think this is incompetence in the civil service. Thank story. you, guys. Run out of time. We are going to talk now. <laughs> Yes, a very good evening from Westminster after a day of local elections across England. 150 councils being contested, more than 4,000 council seats being fought. It is, of course, a prime test for all the parties, especially tonight for Theresa May and Jeremy Corbyn, both of whom have their own challenges to tackle. Let's remind ourselves, just over a year ago, Theresa May was enjoying very high ratings, high enough, in fact, to tempt her into a snap general election. And we all know what happened next. She lost her parliamentary majority. So stay with us, because overnight and tomorrow, we'll find out the verdict of millions of voters across England. The stakes are high. We are, of course, given what's happening with Brexit, probably in the most important period in British politics since the end of the Second World War. It is that important. Now, during the day, the Prime Minister cast a vote in Westminster, and these results might be difficult for the Conservatives. Government tend to have uh, a bit of uh, damage midterm in these elections. We'll see if that happens tonight. But the Tories are hoping to win control of some councils in places uh, such as Peterborough and Basildon. What about Labour? Well, the Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn, uh, was out early to cast his vote in North London. Uh, his party, of course, did particularly well in the capital in last year's general election. So, the real test of England uh, in the North and in the Midlands. And Sir Vince Cable, leader of the Lib Dem, needs to rebuild its local councillor base, which was sharply reduced during the years of the coalition government with David Cameron, which ended in 2015. So a very big test for the council seats at stake tonight. Some key election battlegrounds. Here we are in Wandsworth in southwest London. This is a high-profile Conservative authority, or has been since 1978. Labour did gain a parliamentary seat in this area last year, and Labour is hoping for what might be a prominent victory in London for them tonight in Wandsworth. Will they do it? Not long to wait. And we're in Basildon in Essex, where most of the seats up were won by UKIP uh, when they were last fought four years ago. This is going to be a big theme tonight, comparing with four years ago. Nigel Farage won 17% of the national vote back then. We are, of course, in a rather different world now, with UKIP fielding a fraction, just a fraction of the candidates in, of 2014. So one of the big questions tonight is, where will the old UKIP vote go in some of these areas? More than enough to keep us going into the early hours. So stay with us. And very kindly joining us in our cosy little studio at Westminster uh, for the next few hours anyway, Claire Perry, uh, the Business Minister for the Conservatives. Hello. Hi, Claire. Nice to have you with us. Uh, for Labour, John McDonnell, the Shadow Chancellor. John, thanks for coming in. And for the Lib Dems, we have uh, Vera Hobhouse, the uh, local government spokesperson. Vera, thank you for coming in as well. Yeah. We will be with you in just a second, so just gather your thoughts. Laura's with us, of course, our BBC political editor, Laura Koonsberg. And, you know, let's just spell it out, Laura. At the start of this, we've talked about midterms. We know there are big political issues out there at the moment which are proving incredibly difficult to navigate. What are you looking for tonight? Well, as you suggest, actually, both of the big main parties have had a hard time in the last few months. It's not the case that someone's been marching forward and the other people have been falling back. So both of them have been playing the expectations game.
game, telling me, you know, in the last hour or so, it's looking tough, tougher than we thought. But the headlines that we could expect, and of course it's very, very early, are Labour making advances. They expect to make advances in London. How big will they be? The Tories are hopeful of maybe nibbling away at the edges in some of the towns around England, but they are expecting the Labour Party to be piling up votes in those big urban centres. But what they will both be looking for is whether or not they can make a difference to the dynamic that we've seen since the general election, where Labour were prospering in big cities, the Tories were taking votes back from UKIP and towns and shires around the country. But one of the interesting things that's happened since the general election, both of the parties have sort of been locked in a grim embrace. They've kind of been level pegging at the polls, both through their own difficulties, struggling to move forward. But tonight, the Tories want to stop the slide. Labour really want new evidence that they are on the march. Laura, thanks very much. What I'd like to do is just take the temperature straight away, if we can, and go to Basildon in Essex. Andrew Sinclair, my colleague, is there. Um, Andrew, uh, I know that uh, this is a big test for the Conservatives and for Labour. Can you give us an early sign of what's going on? Yes, and it's also a big test for UKIP because you'll remember four years ago when these seats were last up, politics was turned on its head when UKIP made dozens of gains, particularly in this part of the world. UKIP has always done well in East Anglia, but particularly...